Command Lift is easy to install. Here are the tools you'll need. Can of Easy Up, vice grips, half inch wrench, 7 16 inch wrench, two balancer winding rods, ladder, measuring tape, drill and drill bits, marker or pencil, Phillips screwdriver, Allen wrench set, two jack stands, hacksaw to cut threaded rod, 10 gauge two wire harness, various screws or rivets to suit your installation, wire cutters. To assist in the installation of command lift, print a copy of the step-by-step -step manual from the DVD and have it with you during the installation. The command lift shipping box includes the following. One six-foot section of aluminum track, including the yellow command lift motor and the mounting bracket. One six-foot section of aluminum track with two joiner bars. One mounting plate that mounts to the roll-up door one signed packing list and test form, and one installation manual DVD. Also included in the shipping box is a parts box containing various items that will be required for the command lift installation. This box includes one threaded turnbuckle connector link, one flexible emergency release cable assembly, including the key cylinder and two keys. Before getting started, perform the door maintenance procedures, which are detailed in the manual. If the door requires more force to open than to close, increase the tension on the balancer. If the door requires more force to close than to open, decrease the tension on the balancer. This procedure is simple and easy to do. Using Whiting Easy Up Spray Lubricant, spray the bearing in the ends of the cable drums and over the spring surface. Use a rag to wipe excess lubricant from the springs. Fully open the roll-up door and push it back towards the front of the trailer or truck body approximately 18 inches. This may require the assistance of another person or a spreader bar placed between the header and the bottom panel of the door. Install vice grip pliers into the track at the bottom roller to hold the door in this open position while working on the balancer. Using a half-inch wrench, undo the two nuts on the balancer center bracket that's located at the midpoint of the whiting balancer. A new balancer center bracket will replace this bracket shortly. Insert a 3 8 inch diameter rod into one of the round holes on the balancer spring winding cone. Ideally, use two rods to maintain the tension on the balancer spring before the new bracket is installed. Adjust tension as required. Once the desired tension has been achieved, install and secure the new balancer bracket that's provided in the command lift box. Rest the mounting plate on the top of the door and slide the plate left or right until the connecting tab lines up with the new balancer bracket. Use the mounting plate as a template and drill five holes in the door panel. Measure the width of the roll-up door and mark the center line of the door on the second panel from the top. Find the paper template in the command lift box. Remove the paper backing and stick the template to the top of the second panel. Line up the top edge of the template with the top edge of the panel and the left edge of the template with the center line of the second panel. Drill quarter-inch holes as indicated on the template. Drill the center hole using a 7 8 inch hole saw. It's recommended that you drill a pilot hole first. For best results, drill halfway through the door from the inside. Open the door fully. Loosen and remove the nuts and rollers from the top door panel. Use jack stands to support the weight of the door and remove the nuts and rollers from the second panel. Using the 7 8 inch hole saw, finish drilling from the front side of the door for the key lock cylinder. Use the fasteners provided to install the mounting plate. Push the emergency release cable through the door panel, through the mounting plate, and through the cover plate. 
fasten the key lock cylinder through the door to the mounting plate with the fasteners that are provided. Use bolt cutters or a hacksaw to remove any unwanted length. Fasten the cover plate to the mounting plate with the machine screws provided. Fasten the emergency release cable to the door plate on the top panel with the plastic cable clamp and the two machine screws provided. Whiting dry freight style roll-up doors come equipped with regular top closure assemblies. It's necessary to replace these assemblies with the adjustable top closure slide arm and bracket assemblies that are included in the command lift box. Use vice grips on the door track to secure the door in position while completing this step. This top closure assembly is already included with Whiting Cold Saver and Whiting Temp Guard doors. Make sure the brackets are installed so that the top panel of the roll-up door pushes against the header to ensure a good seal when the door is closed. Check the clearance of the top panel and balancer brackets. The next step in the installation is to assemble and install the command lift aluminum track to the roof bows of the trailer or truck body. Line up the two pieces of track on a straight, level bench or work surface. Using an Allen key, loosen the six screws on each side that are holding the joiner slides in the rear track section. Pull the two track joiners halfway out of the rear track section and lightly tighten the two front screws. Slide the front track over the two joiner pieces and ensure that the two tracks fit together snugly. Make sure the two tracks align properly and there are no sharp edges at the joint. Sharp edges at this location will cause premature wear to the motor sliders. Tighten down all the screws and once again, check for fit and alignment. Pick up the front of the command lift track assembly and fasten the adjustable mounting bracket to the balancer center bracket that you installed earlier. Place the 5 16th inch nut and bolt through the two pieces and finger tighten the nut. All nuts in this area will be tightened later. Using jack stands or another safe method, lift the command lift track up to the ceiling or roof bows. Measure from the edge of the body roof to the edge of the command lift track at the header. Adjust the other end of the track and confirm that the same measurement is used along the entire length of the track. Tighten the jack stands to ensure the track will not move while it's being fastened to the roof bows. It's critical that the command lift be installed parallel to the sides of the trailer or truck body and as close to the center line of the roof bows as possible. Using a suitable drill bit, drill holes in every roof bow using the entire length of the command lift track. Be careful not to drill through the roof skin. Use the two grooves in the track to locate the positioning of your fasteners. Use two fasteners at every roof bow. A large head screw or rivet with a head depth of less than one quarter inch is recommended. Open the black access panel on the motor unit and you'll see a metal lever. Insert a screwdriver in the hole on this lever and pull the lever towards the roll-up door. This will release the motor unit and allow it to slide freely along the track so you can continue to drill the track. Slide the motor unit by hand along the entire length of the track. Watch and feel for obstructions during travel. Make sure the fastener heads are not too large and the track joint is smooth and secure. Once the track is secure and straight, tighten all the nuts and fasteners at the header bracket. Slide the command lift motor unit towards the door as far as it will go, then slide it back approximately three quarters of an inch. Make sure the roll-up door is in the fully closed position. Measure the distance between the hole in the tab on the motor unit and the hole in the tab on the door plate and cut the threaded connector rod one inch shorter than this measurement. Screw the end fittings on the threaded rod and clip the turnbuckle assembly to the command lift motor unit and door plate. The turnbuckle assembly should be resting at approximately 45 degrees. 
open the roll-up door by hand and confirm that everything operates smoothly. You will require the services of a qualified person to connect the command lift to the vehicle's battery or other suitable 12-volt, 20-amp power source. Use a two-wire, 10-gauge wire harness to complete the next step of the command lift installation process. Make sure these wires are a minimum of 10 gauge and that the harness is long enough to reach comfortably from the converter box to the 12 volt 20 amp power source you've decided to use. On the road side of the aluminum track, you'll see two magnet assemblies that are held in place with set screws. One assembly is in the front track and the other assembly is in the back track. These magnetic assemblies tell the command lift how far to travel before stopping. Slide the command lift motor unit so it's located between these magnetic assemblies. Find the connector lever in the access panel on the command lift motor unit and pull the lever towards the front of the body away from the door opening until the lever snaps into place. The motor unit is now locked into place in the track. Replace the cover on the access panel. Check the installation of the command lift once again, and when you're satisfied that the installation is complete, press the button on the remote control transmitter. The door will open until the rear of the motor unit reaches the position of the open magnet, and then it will stop. Press the button again and the door will close until the rear of the motor unit reaches the position of the closed magnet assembly, and once again, it will stop. Adjust the magnetic assemblies a small amount each time. The open position should be adjusted far enough to make sure the roll-up door is just clear of the header when it's fully open. This will provide a full door opening on the truck body or trailer. The closed position should allow the command lift to close the door enough to ensure the bottom seal is compressed on the door sill and to put sufficient pressure on the door to make sure the door will not bounce while the vehicle is in motion. Place the command lift caution label above the door grab handle, just above the pull strap. This label informs operators that the door will not operate normally and that they must use the remote control transmitter in order to activate the door or use the key on the emergency release system in order to operate the door manually. When the remote control button is pushed, the LumaBar LED lights on the command lift motor will turn on and the door will open. With the door open, these lights will stay on for 15 minutes unless the button is pushed again. When the remote control button is pressed again, the door will close and the lights will stay on for one minute. If the remote control button is pressed while the door is in travel, up or down, the door will stop. The next time the button is pushed, the door will travel in the opposite direction. If the roll-up door hits an object, such as a box or other cargo while it's closing, the door will stop closing and back up approximately six inches, allowing the obstacle to be safely removed. In the absence of power, you can use the key provided to disengage the command lift. Simply insert the key and turn it to release the lock cylinder. Pull the cable firmly. This will release the motor unit from the track and allow the roll-up door to operate manually. Likewise, from the inside, you can pull the emergency release cable and release the motor unit from the track. The command lift installation is now complete. Get ready to see the benefits that will affect your bottom line. Superior operator safety. Increased security of your cargo. Remote control operation increased door life, and decreased downtime, all resulting in improved fleet efficiency.